Okay, today's video is entitled Part 2, Electric Potential Energy Work, and a little bit about potential difference for point charges. This is Part 2. In this video, I'm going to go over the difference between negative and positive electric potential energy and changes in electric potential energy. It is fascinating, to say the least. Okay, in Part 1, I went over the equations we use to calculate electric potential energy work and a little bit about potential difference. If you want to, you can go right now, link to part one. Watch part one first. Here is the link to part one. Or you can watch part two, and I'll put the link again at the end of the video, because I'm sure once you see this video, you will want to go back and see part one. Now, as I did at the end of part one, I'll do at the end of part two. I'll put some links to some simple problems that we will work out, and you can work out and see as examples, so that after you watch part one, part two, and do a few examples, you will have an excellent conceptual and mathematical understanding about potential energy, changes in potential energy, electric potential energy, work, and a little bit about potential difference for point charges. Now, in this video, I'm going to rely heavily on this graph when we talk about the difference between negative and positive potential energy, electric potential energy. On this graph, the x-axis, R in meters, it's the distance between the charges. Above the x-axis, positive potential energy. Below the x-axis, negative electric potential energy. And each of these green lines describes the potential energy as it relates to the distance between the charges. Okay, we'll talk about each one in just a moment. Now, you might be wondering, how come sometimes we have positive potential energy and sometimes we have negative potential energy? With gravitational potential energy, we don't have negative potential energy. That's right, but with gravitational, gravitational potential energy, you only have attractive forces. Here we have attractive and forces that repel each other. Okay? So the issue is this. When you calculate electric potential energy, this is the equation, one of the equations that we can use. One of the equations, K times charge 1 times charge 2 divided by the distance between them. You have to, I'll repeat, you have to use the negative and positive signs. You remember when we calculated the Coulomb force, Coulomb's law, the electric force, we didn't use the signs on the charges. But now when you calculate electric potential energy and when you calculate potential and potential difference, you're going to have to use the charges. Use the negative signs, use the positive signs. All right? Now, when are we going to have a positive answer? If we're multiplying two charges and we're using their signs, it will occur if we have two positives. Because a positive charge times a positive charge, a positive times a positive is a positive. That's right. And as you might know, if you have a negative and a negative, a negative charge times a negative charge, a negative times a negative is also a positive. So if you have two like charges, two positives or two negatives, okay, this is one pair, this is another pair, separate pair then you're going to have positive potential energy. And you can see, as they get closer together, their potential energy, their positive potential energy increases. It gets more positive okay, as they get closer together, which we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, when are we going to have negative answer? Well, K is positive, R is positive. That means if we have a positive charge and a negative charge, or of course, if you have a negative charge and a positive charge, when you multiply negative and positive, positive and negative, you're going to get a negative answer. So if you have a negative charge and a positive charge, their potential energy is going to be negative. And as you bring those charges close together, their potential energy gets to be more negative. All right, it gets to be more negative. So, if you have positive potential energy between two charges, you know you have like charges. You don't necessarily know whether they're both positive or both negative, but you have like charges, and those are going to repel each other. Okay, now, to get po negative potential energy, up here we have positive, down here we have negative, then you for, therefore you know you have a positive and negative. You have opposite charges, and they are going to be attracted to each other. Okay, so that's the difference between kind of positive and negative potential energy. But let's talk about the change in potential energy. When we calculate the change in potential energy, we're going to use the final potential, potential energy minus the initial. It's always final minus initial. When you calculate temperature, time, position, velocity, it's always the final velocity minus the initial. you got to have the right sign. Okay? Because we're using our signs when we're calculating the potential energy in the first place, it's always going to be final minus initial. Now remember, when we calculate the change in potential energy, we're also calculating the amount of work that you or the amount of work that an external force does when it moves those charges either closer or farther away. And in this video, we're going to bring these charges closer together. Okay, now let's assume at the beginning 
they're two meters apart. Well, if they're two meters apart, according to this graph, which is just an example, if they're two meters apart, then for the positive charge, the two positive charges or the two negative charges, then the initial potential energy, Ui, would be positive and it would let be, let's just say, 10 joules. Now for the two at the bottom, let's assume they have the same magnitude of charge, just these are opposites, okay? Their potential energy, because they have a positive and negative, is going to be negative, so it's going to be minus Ui, some minus, okay? And that means it's going to be, um, let's say, minus 10 joules, okay? But it's going to be negative. So in one case, it's positive. In one case, it's negative. Now, we're going to, in this case, bring these charges closer together. And then we're going to bring these charges down here closer together. Well, if we bring them closer together, you can see as we bring them closer together, the potential energy for the positive, the, the two positive and the two negatives, the like charges, is going to get more positive. So let's just say we bring them so that they're half a meter apart. So now their new potential energy is 40 joules. Let's do the same thing. Let's bring these two charges so that they're half a meter apart. And now their new potential energy is negative 40. Okay, now let's calculate and look at the change in potential energy, because that's really the most interesting thing. We're always looking at the change in potential energy. Is it coming from infinity, where the potential energy is zero to start with, or are we moving them closer together in this example from like two meters to half a meter? Now remember, the change in potential energy is final minus initial. Well, let's look at the initial for each one first. The initial for the like charges, we said, was 10 joules. Over here we have 10 joules. The initial for the opposite was minus 10. So this is positive and this is negative. The magnitude is the same opposite charge, opposite sign. Now what about the final? The final, when we brought them closer together, this got more positive. So that went to 40. For the like for the opposite charges, it got more negative, minus 40. So these are the initials, these are the finals. We got to subtract final minus initial, and so we got to put our negative sign in there like this for each one. Okay, now what's the change? Well, this is 40 minus 10. 40 minus 10 is 30, and I put plus 30 there for emphasis. Now this one down here, it's minus 40 is the final, minus minus 10, which is initial, and a minus a minus is a plus, so this is minus 40 plus 10, and that means it's minus 30. Now, what do those things mean? What does it mean if this one increased by 30, but this one decreased by 30? That seems kind of odd. Why is 1 plus and 1 minus? Well, let's think about it conceptually, because it should make sense conceptually also. We have these charges. These are like charges. They repel each other. So we said we we're going to move them closer together from two meters to half a meter. Well, if we move them closer together, we have to do work. Remember, the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of work. So when we move something to a place it doesn't want to be, we do positive work. So the change in potential energy of those two charges was plus 30 joules. That means we did plus 30 joules of work. Think about it. You're moving something to a place it doesn't want to be. It's just like gravitational potential energy. When you lift something up off the ground, it doesn't want to be up off the ground. How do you know? Because when you drop, when you let go of it, it just drops. When you lift something up, you do work, you do positive work, and you increase its potential energy. Okay? So now what about for down here, we have opposite charges. Well, we decreased, when we move these together, the potential energy of this system of two charges went down. Well, why did it go down? And that means also that we did negative work. What does that mean when we do negative work? Well, we're bringing these two charges closer together. These two charges want to be together. These two charges and these two charges don't want to be together. So we have to do positive work. When we bring something, when we bring two things together that want to be together, then we're decreasing the energy between them and we do negative work. It's just like gravitational potential energy. When you're, when you're holding something up off the ground, it has a certain amount of potential energy. When you lower it back down to the ground, where it originally started, you're bringing it to a place it wants to be. It wants to be on the Earth's surface. And therefore, you lower the potential energy. So we're lowering the potential energy. So you can say if you do positive work or the change in potential energy is positive, you're moving two things together that don't want to be together. Okay? That's the way I think about it. Positive, positive change. Do positive work. When you do positive work, you're bringing two things closer together that don't want to be together. Or you're moving something 
closer to where it doesn't want to be, whether it's electric or gravitational. In this case, we're lowering the pentahedral energy, so we're bringing something to a place it wants to be. These two charges want to be together. Okay, now in this example, we said we're moving them closer together. Well, let's just think about it. If we were moving these charges for farther apart, let's just say they started at 0.5 and went to 2. Well, this would be, excuse me, yeah, went, started at 0.5 and went to 2, like the opposite example, the opposite direction. Well, these charges don't want to be together. They want to be away from each other. So if we move something to where it wants to be, then we would be doing negative work, and this would be negative 30. Now, these charges, they don't want to be separated. Now, you got to think about charges. You have positive and negative. They don't want to be separated. So if we pull this one over here, it doesn't want to be over here. It wants to be over here. So if we were to move this from 0.5 to 2 meters, then this would be plus 30 joules, and we would be doing positive work. Okay, so in either case, whichever direction you're moving it, think about, does it want to be there? If it does not want to be there, then that's increasing the potential energy, and you do positive work. If you're moving something to a place where it wants to be, then you're doing negative, you're, you're decreasing the potential energy, and you're doing negative work. So there is such a thing as positive and negative work, and you can think of it in terms of gravitational. When you raise something up, you do positive work. When you lower something down, it does negative. You're doing negative work. Okay, remember, this is the change in potential energy equals work, and you're actually calculating how much work you do or some external force does when it moves those things. Okay, so remember, when you calculate electric potential energy, when you calculate potential work, you have to use the negative and positive signs. Don't lose those. Okay, and it will all fit together. It should fit together mathematically like we did, plus and minus, and it should fit together conceptually. If we bring something closer together that don't, that don't want to be closer together, if we bring two things closer together that don't want to be closer together, you do work. Or I, let's just say, if you're moving two things to a place they don't want to be, you do positive work. If you're moving something closer to a place it wants to be, then you do negative work. Whether it's charges or gravity, it all fits together. It's physics. It's beautiful. Okay? Thank you. I hope you found that video interesting and helpful. Clarify those concepts. You don't think, see this explained very well in textbooks, I don't think. Think about the graph. Think about the charges. Think about the changes in potential energy and the work, negative and positive, and it will all fit together. Thanks for watching. If you want to, you can go back and watch video one now part one, or here are the links to those problems. Try a few problems. You'll see how it all works. It's not that complicated. Okay, thanks for watching. If you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a nice comment in the comment section. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.